Hi, my name is Sebastian Olini and I'm a sustainability expert with the Sustainable Natives and Sustentio. I'm very honored to welcome you today to this online course on urban sustainability for tomorrow's Berlin, moving challenges and creative options on behalf of the Free University of Berlin. This course has four different parts. First of all, what does sustainability mean, especially in the context of Berlin and other similar cities? Second of all, we're going to dive into sustainable mobility as urban sustainable mobility is one of the biggest challenges for cities. And third of all, we're going to look at existing policies, especially here in Berlin, that address the urban sustainability challenges and future policies. And fourth of all, we're going to give practice examples from startups and other companies that are active here in Berlin. Let's dive right into it. First of all, I'm sitting in this car. This car is a hybrid. What does that mean in terms of sustainability? I chose this car because it was economically feasible for me. And I chose this car because the environmental footprint is lower because I can have at least short distances with a battery, about 40 to 50 kilometers that I can drive on the battery. And I'm using it with renewable energy that I charge at home. And I felt also that the brand that manufactured this car provided me the safety of a reliable car and also of giving enough wages to the workers and of excluding child labor in its supply chain. So for me, as for most people who you will ask, economic, social and environmental factors are very relevant for sustainability. The most important policy definition for sustainability is probably still the Brundtland definition. There was a report by the Brundtland Commission in 1984, and it's defined sustainable development as being development that meets the needs of the current generations without putting the ability of future generations to meet their own needs in danger. And there is so many more sustainability definitions. One of the first ones probably by a German forester in the 1800s who said that you shouldn't take too many trees out of the forest so that the forest can regrow. And there's a professor actually who collected more than 900 of these sustainability definitions. There's probably even more out there. The most recent important sustainability definition probably came with the Agenda 2030 the Agenda 2030 defined 17 sustainable development goals. And these include, for example, zero hunger and to end poverty by 2030. The Agenda 2030 was passed in 2015 by all 193 nations of the United Nations. And it also includes goal number 11, which is sustainable cities and communities. As sub targets of this goal. There is safe and affordable housing, affordable and sustainable transport systems, inclusive and sustainable urbanization to protect the world's cultural and natural heritage, to reduce the adverse effects of natural disasters, to reduce the environmental impacts of cities, to provide access to safe and inclusive green and public spaces, and to reach these targets, to have a strong national and regional development planning, to implement policies for inclusion, resource efficiency and disaster risk reduction, and to support least developed countries in sustainable and resilient building. Now, when I think of sustainable cities, and probably when you think about sustainable cities too, affordable and sustainable transport systems, and to reduce the environmental impact of cities, is super important. Of course, safe and affordable housing and sustainable housing is also very important, but that deserves its own video. And let's go and focus this video, especially on sustainable and affordable transport systems. What does that actually mean? And how can we use urban mobility and urban transport to also reduce the environmental impact of cities? 
Part 2. Sustainable mobility. That would mean social, economic and environmental sustainability. Especially for urban transport and mobility, it should be equitable and affordable so everybody can access it. It should be low emission, especially low carbon, low noise and low energy usage. It should have a low footprint both in terms of manufacturing the mobility products and in terms of footprint, in terms of urban space that it uses. So at the same time, and part of that is included in the reduced emissions, it shouldn't exceed the planetary boundaries for sure. If you don't know the planetary boundary concept, that's also a very interesting one. And I link it below in the video description for you to read more about this. Briefly summarized, it means that we are exceeding already the planetary capacity on quite some different levels, and that includes our climate emissions, but also the loss of biodiversity. So we are in a climate crisis. This is why I'm addressing low emissions. And this is also why the UN has said that the environmental impact of cities needs to be reduced. Traffic is a major factor in this. Traffic in cities, but also in general, contributes a big portion of the climate emissions that we have. And Germany, for example, is actually not on track at all to reduce these climate emissions in the area of traffic. While the other sectors are faring relatively well, we are way off target to reduce our climate emissions by 40% by 2030. And that is due to increasing traffic, actually, overall and increasing emissions despite the first small impacts of having electric cars. So in order to achieve our climate goals, in order to achieve the sustainable development goals, cities need to become more sustainable and traffic needs to become more sustainable, especially. How can we do this? Now, taking the example of Berlin, Berlin is actually the biggest European Union city right now with 3.7 million inhabitants and it covers an area of 900 square kilometers. That's actually not a very high population density so it means there's a lot of people but they also have a lot of space. There's a lot of green in Berlin. There are also water areas, lakes and rivers and the average housing is not that high. The average houses are less high and there's less skyscrapers than in many other cities like Amsterdam or Paris. That sounds nice and it has some sustainability advantages like having parks and having more water area, but at the same time, it also means more urban traffic needs. It means more transportation needs. People, when they want to visit their friends, or when they get deliveries from parcels or from food services, when businesses transport their goods, or when people commute into the city, the kilometers that are actually driven are bigger than in many other cities. At the same time, Berlin is growing. About 20,000 people move to Berlin every year, even if you subtract already the people who are leaving Berlin. And despite Berlin having among the lowest car ownership ratio, so uh, relatively few people in Berlin have a car compared to other German cities, because so many new people move to Berlin, the total number of cars is still increasing. That means more emissions, more pollution and more traffic jams. Berlin is already exceeding its emission levels on many days in the year. In the last year with the pandemic, it was a little bit better with the reduced traffic. But in all the other years and probably very soon again, the average emission in many places in Berlin will cross the allowed limits in terms of nitrous oxide emissions and in terms of fine dust pollution. And that has a direct effect on the health of Berliners. About 1500 euros per Berliner are to be spent additionally because of the negative health effects only because of the traffic emissions. 
And there are also a lot of accidents. 50 people lost their lives in the last year because of traffic accidents, 17 of which were bicyclists. The Berlin Bicycle Network is, compared to many other European cities, not so great. Amsterdam and Copenhagen, for example, being very positive examples, with Berlin really lacking behind. At the same time, the car is getting less cool. 20% less of young people are making their driving license than 10 years ago. And 41% of all Germans, and this is the country where the car used to be really the holy cow and where we have so many car manufacturers and so much industry based around the car manufacturing. So only 41% of the Germans are still saying that the car is a status symbol. At the same time, 60% of the young urban population are even considering the car not important at all anymore. So the decrease of popularity of cars coincides with less and less people making a driving license and also an increase in bike sales. And unfortunately, there is still more traffic in Berlin but the policies are kicking in also to reduce the amount of traffic in Berlin. So what exactly is being done? Berlin has declared a climate emergency in 2019 and that means that it wants to reduce the carbon emissions of the city and have more political actions regarding that. It's of course a little bit symbolic but at the same time, there are very concrete actions being proposed. Berlin plans for 2030 a zero emission zone in the inner city. That means no cars with diesel or benzene engines can then still enter the inner part of the city. That will be a huge change. After 2030, the zero emission zone will actually be still enlarged and will probably cover in the end most of the city. At the same time, Berlin is investing in its own fleet regarding public transport, regarding maintenance cars or also trash trucks and so on to electrify this whole fleet by 2030. And it's also testing hydrogen as an alternative, especially for trucks. There will be higher parking fees to make commuting into the city less attractive and also to save urban space. There will be in general less space for cars Many car lanes are now being converted into bicycle lanes. And there's even a congestion charge similar to London being discussed, although that has not passed yet. At the same time, Berlin hasn't been really that successful yet. There has been a mobility law that is actually planning to install 2,778 kilometers of new bicycle lanes in Berlin. But since that law has passed two years ago, only 1.4% of these bicycle lanes have been installed. So Berlin is not on track on reaching this increase of bicycle lanes by 50%. Right now, Berlin has about 5,400 kilometers of bicycle lanes. That might sound a lot. Many are not in a good condition and there's still a lot missing. For a city the size of Berlin, the investment into bicycle lanes is actually rather low. At the same time, the goal to have more high-speed bike lanes has actually been completely failed so far zero kilometers have been installed in the last years. The reason for this failure so far is sometimes bureaucracy and red tape, sometimes really difficult um, responsibilities within the local administration. Sometimes there's also just really limited space available to install these bike lanes. And most importantly, probably there is not the biggest willingness by all levels of administration to proceed with these goals. However, there is really big potential. More than 20% of the car drives in Berlin are actually under two kilometers and more than 50% are less than five kilometers. So that means if 
all these short distance car rides would be reduced, would be taken away and converted into bike rides, the traffic could be reduced by 50%. At the same time, Berlin, however, is on track to have more public transport. There is more subways being built, more local railways, more bus lanes, more buses are being bought and so on. Of course, that's also very necessary with all these people coming to Berlin. But I'm optimistic that Berlin is actually really investing in its public transport facilities. Part four, best practice examples. Let's come to the last part of this lecture, and that is what are best practice examples to address urban sustainable mobility? Now, Berlin will not solve its sustainability challenges with policies alone. Policies can play an important role to reduce traffic, to have the right incentives. And one policy that I didn't even mention yet, of course, there's also subsidies going into different traffic solutions. For example, there's the electric car subsidy by the German state. And then there are special subsidies by the city of Berlin, for example, for taxi companies and small and medium sized businesses to switch to electric or hydrogen cars. And there is also subsidy for charging infrastructure and for other measures. You might want to hear about futuristic startups and ideas. And one of them, for example, is the driverless bus that is being tested by the public transport system here in Berlin that would enable more sustainable mobility, especially on the outskirts. With a driverless bus, you can enable the last mile transport, how it is called as well, to the homes of people, even where regular buses would not be affordable because having regular buses would be too big and too expensive for the small transport needs of uh, local suburban communities. And another development to look out for is, for example, also the startup Yelby, which is supported by the Berlin public transport company BVG and it enables intermodality, so linking public transport with other solution providers such as Nextbike. Policies can play an important role and there's also funding for research, of course, and other things, but economic approaches are also very important. And there's really a lot of companies who are being these change agents, who are really playing a big role in changing sustainability as it is right now in Berlin. So while policies are very important to change mobility and there's a lot of investment also that is being done for public transport and for other measures that are driving urban sustainability in regards to transport and mobility, there is also startups and companies who have to play a big role in transforming our behavior. There needs to be offers and opportunities for more sustainable urban mobility. Let's get into some of the examples. First of all, there is of course also subsidies that are being put in place by policies and that are supporting the switch to electric cars and to more sustainable urban transport. Both private and also companies can claim subsidies for switching to electric cars. There's, for example, a special Berlin subsidy also for taxis and to go the electric way. And there's more subsidies also regarding this charging infrastructure. Charging infrastructure is a good keyword also. There is a very important startup in Berlin that is called Plug Surfing. They are enabling a universal key for you to not only rely on one supplier for charging your car in the public area, but that you can use many suppliers, that you can sort of uh, have a roaming conditions with many different suppliers of electric charging spots. Another very important startup is active in the area of intermodality. 
there's actually quite a lot active in this area. Let me first get to what does intermodality actually mean. Now, intermodality is a very important area of having more sustainability with urban transport and mobility. First of all, ideally, you are always using the most sustainable way to move yourself and your goods throughout the city and beyond. That can mean for a short way to walk, for a medium way, maybe to take the bicycle, or maybe to have an electric scooter with you. Then for the longer distances, it can be public transport, and in under some circumstances, a car or a transporter is inevitable. Ideally, however, you always use the most sustainable ways of transportation. And in many cases, that also means combin combining different modes of transportation. So for example, you take your bicycle to the subway station, then you take the subway, you might switch to a bus then still. And at the end of your journey, you might take another bicycle or you walk or you might take a free floating car that brings you the last meters to the furniture store and then you can transport maybe your future furniture with an electric transporter or a cargo bike. Now, combining all these different modes of transportation, that is what we call intermodality, using several modes of transportation within the same journey. A very important startup in this area is Tier, which is based out of Berlin. They have these small electric scooters, but also the bigger e-scooters that can drive up to 45 kilometers per hour fast. Especially the latter ones replace a lot of car rides and they can also support you with transporting your shopping and they can even enable you to have a ride outside of the city to places that are probably not accessible with public transport. The smaller scooters are a little bit more controversial in regards of sustainability. There have been actually a lot of reports about too many of these scooters breaking down too quickly there has also been a lot of cases of vandalism. Um, there has been a lot of competition regarding these small e-scooters in the city. So many companies flooded the city at the same time with these small e-scooters and people were not happy about them using so much urban space. So there has been a lot of cases of vandalism. There have been a lot of scooters being thrown into the rivers and lakes in Berlin and many of them have been destroyed. And of course, there's the question of whether or not they are really more sustainable, especially if they really replace car rides. Another mean of transportation, like not moving around so much weight and not um, using so much urban space, is then more sustainable uh, than if it really replaces a car ride and not if it replaces, for example, walking the way. So the big question is with the with the scooters, do they really make a sustainability difference? For the big ones, the research indicates yes. For the small e-scooters, probably not. Although it really depends on how much it replaces car rides. Now, at the same time, there's also the argument that this um, is a question of accessibility. Many people who have never learned to use bicycles are using these e-scooters for a more sustainable mode of transportation. It, it's really still not decided. But going away from the approach of tier, there's also a lot of other startups that are working in the area of intermodality. There's, for example, Nextbike and the Donkey Republic, which are offering bicycles that you can use in the so-called free floating principle. Although with Nextbike, there's more and more stations as well. And with urban space being limited, the city actually is also regulating free floating bicycles more and more. Free floating means usually that you can pick up uh, the product in an area where the person who used it last left it. And then you can 
really freely use it within the whole rental area, usually the inner city, and then leave it almost anywhere. Now, that model is getting a bit more limited nowadays, but it's still in place for cars, again, uh, and it's partially still in place for the scooters and the bicycles. There have been now dedicated zones declared in Berlin where you need to leave those devices in order not to have a fine, because too many of these devices were just standing in the way and polluting or uh, taking up too much urban space in Berlin. Now, next bike in Donkey Republic are probably the most successful bicycle uh, free-floating operators in Berlin. Now, what kind of innovative products are actually there? There is a lot of innovation also in the area of the kind of mobility products that are available on the market. And worth mentioning are definitely the startups of Ono and Sitcar, who are both providing cargo bikes that can transport so much cargo that it's actually a real alternative to the big transporter cars. And they are being tested together with other products and cargo bikes, for example, right now by parcel delivery services and by delivery services regarding food or other products. Especially Sitcar is almost the size of a small car and I would like you to now meet Michael Rassinger on behalf of Sitcar, who's going to present you a little bit more about the product. Hello, my name is Michael Rassinger. I am responsible for corporate communications at Sitcar. Sitcar is a German startup that pioneers new mobility in urban environments and is part of the transport revolution. Our vision says, Sitcar improves urban mobility with climate neutral alternatives that move and inspire. But how can we achieve this? By paving the way for future oriented sustainable e-mobility in the city with the help of needs based transport solutions that stand out for their design, functionality and affordability. In the beginning there was the idea for individual mobility with a bicycle but with enough payload and stability to be able to bring even large purchases home without a car. The cargo bike thus became a pillar of the urban mobility transformation, showing its strength not only in the B2C sector, but above all in the B2B sector. Over time, Sitcar's vehicles underwent several stages of evolution, improved by constant customer feedback. This resulted in a mobility product that went into serious production in the fall of 2020, the Loadster. The Loadster e-cargo bike is the clever combination of bicycle and car. Stable, reliable and intuitive to operate. The powerful electric motor helps you pedal, making it easier to transport loads of up to 235 kilograms. The cabin protects you from wind and weather while you simply leave any traffic jam behind you on the streets and cycle path of the city. At the same time, you reach a speed of 25 km per hour and you ride without a driver's license. With the Loadster from Sitka, we support urban sustainability in various ways. First, the Loadster drives locally emission-free. The batteries can be charged at any household socket. Second, with every Loadster, Transporters with conventional powertrains become a bit more superfluous. At the same time, their disappearance creates more space in the city. Third, the production takes place 100% in Berlin. We use almost all regional and national suppliers. In addition to that, the Loadster can be almost completely recycled. The future of logistics in the city is the cargo bike. Remember our name, Sitcar. Have a nice day. Now, Sitcar, together with other cargo bike transporters, have of course the huge opportunity of using less urban space, having less emissions, and overall providing a more sustainable alternative to many existing solutions. And I'm very glad that they are being tried out and are developing their products out of Berlin. And I have the big hope that cargo bikes will provide a substantial contribution to a more sustainable 
urban transport system in Berlin in the future. Another approach, of course, is to use cargo bikes not only for transport, but also for the private use. And more and more car owners are now making the switch to more sustainable mobility. They are either having additionally a cargo bike or they get rid of their car. Meet Christoph of the Mobility House, who is trying to use this opportunity to transform his garages and his car dealership and later other car dealerships and garages into change agents for sustainable mobility. Good morning, I'm Christoph. I'm a political scientist by training and together with my wife, the second generation owner of a Berlin-based car dealership. But first of all, believe it or not, I hate cars, but I love hiking, biking, walking. My life is an intermodal life um, already since uh, 20 years. So um, in order to, um, yes, change the way our companies, garages and car dealerships are doing business worldwide, we founded our Mobilitätshaus in 2021. We try to um, sell cargo bikes. In the next couple of months, we are going to service fully electric cars and we are showing our customers, car drivers themselves, how to yeah, live the intermodal way, uh, way uh, themselves. We are um, believing that the unique selling point of a mobilitäts house, of a mobility house, other as, as a auto house or a car house, how we uh, call the garage in a German, um, needs to be the way where every customer can experience the intermodal way themselves. Um, using the cargo bike one day, um, driving the car the other day, using public transport. We are going to enable our customers um, to deal with this complexity of the new mobility revolution. Um, in this pilot facility um, period, we are going to do it um, for ourselves, for our garages in the suburban and the city center area. In the next step, we are going to scale it up and we try to be a transformation agency for every garage in Germany, Europe and worldwide. So um, if you like this vision, then um, believe that urban sustainability needs to have multiplicators, needs to have um, institutions who try to enable other people to go the same way. We are believing that uh, traditional car dealerships can be those change agents. And with the Mobilitäts House, we are paving the way in this direction. So the Mobility House is offering really interesting approaches to educating car owners and to motivating them to make the switch to more sustainable mobility. And at the same time, the Mobility House is already thinking about enabling other garages and car dealers to become these change engines for more sustainable mobility. But how does it look already today? How are cargo bikes and other solutions being operated by companies? Meet Business on Wheels, a provider not only of maintenance for cargo bikes, but also selling and advising businesses on micro-mobility. My name is Stefan Döbrich. I'm the CEO and founder of Business of Rädern GmbH. The company is based in Berlin, Germany, and we help to optimize our customers to operate more climate neutral through micromobility applications to optimize business values and to implement sustainable mobilities. So I have a team of nine employers. We have service mechanics and also sales um, salesmen and saleswomen um, in Berlin. And we branches out into the field of different services all around mobility, new mobility, e-mobility, and services like analysis, 
of um, Wagle fleets, as well as projecting and project management. We sell uh, micro mobility vehicles um, um, like cargo bikes, bikes, e scooters, LEVs, and so on. And we support companies and governmental organizations to change their vehicle fleets and mobility behavior as well. And for us, it is not only in the vehicle, it is also everything around that. For example, charging situation of e-vehicles. Where is it possible to charge? How can I charge? What do I need? Um, we also produce own, uh, de own developed uh, products um, about the charging stations. And another theme is um, the safe parking areas. If you have new mobility, you have to park, you have to change parking areas for cars into areas for um, the LEVs or other uh, EU vehicles. Um, another part is um, the accommodations for the drivers. You need uh, lockers, shower rooms and so on and also the safety components. For um, long-lasting usage of the vehicles, we su uh, support our customer with our service mechanics. Um, we have a mobile maintenance and uh, repair service, and we are operating in Berlin and Brandenburg, as well as in other areas in Germany for the moment. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Now, after having heard these super interesting startups, let me let you know that there's so many more of them. There's hundreds of green sustainable startups in Berlin, also dozens of them in the area of sustainable mobility. Many of them you can meet, for example, at the Motion Lab, a co-working space and network of sustainable mobility startups right in the heart of Berlin. You can find the link to the Motion Lab in the video description below. There's so much more out there and we don't have time to go into all of them, but I encourage you to do your own research, to look into other sustainability options for the future of Berlin and of maybe your city as well. And I encourage you strongly to get involved and inform yourself about the future of sustainable urban mobility. Thank you very much for listening in. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of these options and other options for sustainable urban mobility. Let me know which other startups you find interesting and that can contribute to these developments. And let me know what you think of this video. Thanks so much for your attention. Have a wonderful and sustainable day. Bye bye.